Welcome, hi everyone, my name is Lon. This tutorial will focus on strings in C-sharp. Please subscribe, it's free, and can help you move forward in programming and technology. If you're already subscribed, please smash the bell icon so that you don't miss out on valuable content. Right, let's launch into it. A string is an object of type string and stores its value as text. A string is a reference type which means the text for a string is stored in a memory location called the heap. The c -sharp string variable does not store the string's text data in its own location in memory, but rather stores a pointer or memory location that points to where the text data for the string is actually stored in a memory location known as the heap. Internally, a string stores a read-only sequential array of char objects. The char object supports Unicode character encodings, values that represent characters. Unicode is a standard use for the consistent representation of text for most of the world's writing systems. Here's a hierarchical representation of data types in C-sharp. Note that the system.string data type inherits directly from the system.object class. All string objects are derived from the system.string class. Note that value types, for example, int, char, bool, and decimal in c -sharp inherit from the system.valuetype abstract class, which ultimately derives from the system.object class. These primitive types can all easily be converted to strings. Here is an example of variables being converted to strings through the use of the toString method which is available to these value type objects. So let's look at some of the ways we are able to define a string object in C-sharp. So let's declare a string without initializing the string with a value. Let's define a string variable that initializes the variable to null. Let's define and initialize a string variable to an empty string. It is important to note that a null string and an empty string are not equal. An empty string is an instance of the system.string class that contains zero characters. In contrast to this, a null string does not refer to an instance of a system.string object, and any attempt to call a method on a null string causes a null reference exception. Let's define and initialize a string variable to a regular string, which is set to text representing a directory path. Note the double backslash sequence of characters. The first backslash character in each of these double backslash sequences is telling the compiler to not interpret the second backslash character as a C-sharp escape symbol, but to rather interpret it as a literal backslash character. The first backslash character is an escape symbol and is part of the C-sharp language. Let's define a string and initialize its value to what's known as a verbatim string literal. Note that the at symbol preceding the string literal allows all the backslash characters in the text to be interpreted as literal backslash characters as opposed to the C-sharp backslash escape symbols. So let's look at another example of the difference between a regular string literal and a verbatim string literal. So if you assigned a string literal, the best Superman movie is Superman 2, where you want to include the movie title Superman 2 in quotations. You can see the compiler has an issue with this because there are red squiggly lines under the string literal. You can achieve the desired result through a regular string literal by using the backslash escape symbol preceding the quotation symbols you want to include within the string literal, like this. Or you can use a verbatim string literal to achieve the same result by doubling up the quotation marks surrounding the movie title and then including the at symbol at the beginning of the string literal. Here are some examples of escape sequences you may want to include in a string literal. 
You may want to include a new line escape sequence with a backslash n. You may want to include a horizontal tab escape sequence with a backslash t. Or a Unicode escape sequence, backslash U0041, which represents the capital A alphabetical character. Here's a table containing escape sequences that can be used within your string literals. Please see details of where you can download a PDF document containing this table from GitHub below in the description. You can use the system.string class rather than the string alias to define a string variable like this. And we don't need the system dot preceding the string class because we have the using system directive at the top of our code. Note that when you define a string using the string keyword, you are doing the exact same thing as using the system.string class. The string keyword is provided in the C-sharp language as an alias for the system.string class. You can use implicit string typing within a method to locally define and initialize a string variable using the var keyword, like this. If you know that specific text will not need to be changed, you can use the const keyword to define a string constant like this. This means you can set the value of the string constant at compile time and this constant text value cannot be changed at runtime. And lastly, because text for a string is internally represented as an array of char objects, you can simply pass an array of char objects to the constructor of a string class like this to initialize a string variable with text. Note that you do not use the new operator to create a string object except when initializing the string with an array of char objects. So what does it mean when we say a string is immutable? This is very important to note. When a string is modified either through the use of a method or operator, the original string is not modified. What is actually happening is an entirely new string is being created in memory each time the string is returned after being modified. The latest modified string will be referenced by the string variable. Text data for all past modified strings may still remain in memory, but might not be referenced by any variable, which means they will be eligible to be garbage collected. Concatenation is the joining of two or more strings from end to end. So we use the plus equals operator to perform the concatenation operation. Once the code for this has been executed, the concatenation operation results in an entirely new string being created. The narrative variable will now point to an entirely new location in memory containing the concatenated string. So what if you did have another variable pointing to the original string? For the sake of keeping things simple, let's name this variable narrative2. Then later on in the code, you decide to use the narrative2 variable that points to the original string as opposed to the narrative variable that points to the modified string to output the narrative. Let's say your intention is to output the full narrative which includes the concatenated text. But because the narrative2 variable is pointing to the original text, this has the unintended consequence of writing the unmodified original narrative to the console screen. Narrative2 is pointing to a completely different memory location to where the latest modified text resides in memory. So as discussed, for this reason, it is important to be mindful of how strings are implemented in C-sharp. So let's write the intended concatenated narrative to the console screen by writing the text stored in the narrative variable to the console screen. And this is the result we want. With C-sharp version 6 came the introduction of string interpolation. Interpolated strings can be identified by the dollar special character and included interpolated expressions within curly brackets. Using string interpolation improves readability and maintainability of code. You can use the string.format method to achieve the same result, but string interpolation improves ease of use and inline clarity. 
So let's implement an example using string interpolation. So we wish to output the text, it is true to say that Superman can leap in a single bound over the Empire State Building, which is 102 stories high. We wish to replace the literal text true with a Boolean variable and the number of stories with an integer variable. We can wrap these variables in curly brackets and include a dollar symbol at the beginning of the string literal like this to implement string interpolation. And we can achieve the same result using what is known as composite formatting. Composite formatting is achieved through the use of the string.format method, which utilizes placeholders to create a format string. The Boolean and integer variables we wish to include in the string literal are replaced with numeric placeholders wrapped in curly brackets, and the variables are passed as arguments subsequent to the string literal argument to the string.format method. Substrings are any sequence of characters contained within a string. So our main string variable will contain the text, Superman is impervious to gunfire. So our first substring will be the word impervious. So we can use the substring method to extract the substring impervious from the main string. The word impervious can be found in our main string using the ordinal position of 12, and the length for the word impervious is 10 characters in size. Note the word impervious within our main string variable is actually spelt incorrectly. It should not have the E at the end of it. So we'll extract 10 characters at position 12 rather than 11 characters. So our arguments that we pass into the substring method are 12 and 10 respectively. So we'll assign the variable named substring to the text extracted from our main string, which is located at the index position of 12 and is 10 characters in length. So the variable substring will be assigned the text value of impervious, which will be the correct spelling of the word, unlike where the word impervious is spelt incorrectly in the main string variable. So the next method we wish to look at is the replace method. And let's say we wish to replace the word gun in our main string with the word missile. So let's create a string variable called substring2 and assign it the text value of gun, Let's also create a string variable called substring3 and assign it the text value of missile. Let's then call the replace method on the main string variable and the first argument will be the text value we wish to replace in the main string variable. So we pass the substring2 variable containing the text gun as the first argument. Then we pass the variable substring3 as our second argument to the replace method which contains the text missile. This is the text with which the text gun will be replaced in our main string variable. We can use the index of method to find the ordinal index position of the starting character of certain text that exists within our main string variable. So we are going to use the index of method to locate the ordinal index position of the word impervious and the text value pointed to by the main string variable. Note that index values are zero based. So let's run the code. As you can see, we are first extracting the substring, which is the word impervious, by implementing the substring method. We then replace the word gun with the word missile in our main string by implementing the replace method. We then implemented the index of method to get the index position of the word impervious. So to demonstrate how individual characters within a string can be accessed through their ordinal index positions, let's write a simple algorithm. Let's first create a for loop structure. The for loop will traverse each character of the text Superman from right to left and write each character to the console screen. Let's run the code. And you can see the code has written the text Superman backwards. In some scenarios such as tight loops that are executed many hundreds or thousands of times, String operations within the loop can adversely affect performance. So using the string builder class to build and handle the string operations in these cases will be more appropriate. The key difference between using the string class and using the string builder class is that as discussed earlier, a string object is immutable, but a string builder object is mutable. So 
In the interests of clarity, I'm going to keep this example very simple. Note that behind the scenes, as it were, string manipulation in C-sharp is highly optimized, so in a lot of cases, building string text data with string operators or methods will be suitable. As discussed, however, in many cases using the string builder class can enhance performance. So we want to build a string with the following text. Super, uh, no. Super string theory is an attempt to explain all the particles and fundamental forces of nature in one theory by modeling them as vibrations of tiny supersymmetric strings. So let's first define a variable as the string builder class and write the code to instantiate a string builder object. So as you can see, there are red squiggly lines under the string builder class. We are easily able to fix this in the Visual Studio IDE by placing our mouse pointers over the red squiggly lines. We can then follow the pop-up instructions click on Show Potential Fixes, then click on the Using System.Text option, and you'll see the red squiggly lines have disappeared. But why is that? So let's go to the top of our code, and as you can see, Visual Studio has added the Using System.Text directive at the top of our code. So the String Builder class is a member of the System.Text namespace, and because the Using System.Text directive is now included at the top of our code, we are now able to access the String Builder class directly. So let's build our string data using the String Builder class. So we are using the append line method to build our string. Note the append line method adds a line terminator at the end of each string, so the text will be formatted accordingly. By using the String Builder class, you are able to directly change individual characters. So if we wanted to change the I in SuperString to an A, Remember the array of characters is zero based. SB in square brackets 8 equals to A. So, super strang theory. Excellent. These code samples can be downloaded from GitHub. If you feel you've gained value from this tutorial, please consider subscribing so as not to miss out on future tutorials that can help you move forward in programming and technology. And please hit the thumbs up icon, it will be greatly appreciated. Please hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on future valuable content. Please feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section. Thank you and take care.